this is uh, BSG Truck Fan 88 here, formerly known as Movie King 88. Um, I've gotten a couple requests and questions sent to me in my private mailbox or just comments on videos, which by the way, thank you for watching, and I hope you've watched either of my From the Earth to the Moon custom soundtrack, which is amazing, or any of my other videos. Um, first and foremost, this is the Nexstar 6 SE um, go-to telescope from Celestron. Um, it's a beginner slash novice telescope. Um, there are numerous sizes. There's a 4 inch, a 5 inch, a 6, and an 8. Um, these are not dedicated telescopes to track things 100%. Um, these are what's considered a go-to scope, where you, know, you program it, which I'll talk about briefly in a minute, and you, you know, set up where you are and what you want to look at. So it'll, you know, you type it in, oh, Jupiter, and it goes to Jupiter, and it will track it fairly effectively. It's not going to be perfect. Um, there are a lot of variables to keep into play. You know, the Earth is spinning and moving around the sun, so is the planet or the stars and the galaxy. So it's not going to be perfect. It's not like it's a professional telescope. Um, it's This is an advanced telescope. This is not something you buy at Toys R Us, so don't let kids under 13 use this unless you guys are really dedicated at taking care of things. But, you know, it's not going to track things 100%. It's going to go to the planet or, you know, the sun or whatever, the galaxy, and it's going to track it effectively, but after about a half hour, it's going to start to lose its cool. Now, when it comes to planets like Jupiter and Saturn, it'll track them. You might have to play with it a little bit while you're using your scope. You know, that's what these are for, you know. Just slightly move the scope, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, and there you go. It's not like it's going to be, oh, it's going to find the planet and then boom. Uh, it's going to lose it. If you're not set up properly, then it will do that. But first and foremost, physical setup. As you can see, I have the telescope here. This is the base. This is the scope. Um, see how you can read Celestron from left to right, top to bottom? That's the way it should be facing. The front of the scope should be going that way. Okay, a lot of times people put it on backwards by accident, or they just don't pay attention, and the Celestron logo is upside down. So what's going to happen is the scope's going to want to do this. Actually, it would be going the other way, sorry. Um, <laughs> because the scope wants to point up to go to the sky, but if your telescope's facing the wrong way, going that way, the front of the scope is going to face down, which is obviously wrong. So it's a simple mistake. Um, it only really matters, if you will, on a scope like this. If you have a manual telescope, then obviously it's not going to matter. But just put it on right. Another thing to um, do when you first get your telescope right away, um, or when you're preparing to go out for the night, you want to make sure that your star pointer is aligned. You know, number one, don't forget to shut it off when you're done using it, but make sure it's aligned. So point the scope at like a, a light or a house or something, something you can identify pretty easily. Obviously when it's daylight or almost dusk, and you can simply um, you know, align it with the screw, with the little twisties here, and it should be fine. Uh, make sure you do that first. A lot of people forget about that when they first get their scope. Do that, you know, every couple of times. Obviously just check and make sure things are properly aligned. So that's the physical setup. Another tip that I'm going to give you guys, a lot of people when they use this kind of scope, like, see, <laughs> that's funny, it just shut off and goes back on, because the power jack, this thing, this godforsaken design, this is the worst thing in the, about this scope, is that the power jack is very loose. You can, you can fix it by doing stuff to it, but obviously you don't want to do that. Um, just so you know, put... You know, even though if you have a, a, a car jack or a home jack like I'm using right now, put double A's in this thing. They don't have to, they don't have to be rechargeable. Um, just put double A's in here so when this unplugs, the unit, the base will stay on. So you won't lose all of your all of your data that you've spent a good 10 minutes putting in. So for, tip for you: put batteries in here, leave them in there. Um, obviously take them out or take one or two out when you're not using the scope for a while. But if you're going to use it a couple nights in a row, you can leave them in there. Um, so, really quick video on the setup here. Obviously, everybody is different depending on where they live, um, but you're going to have, you know, alignment. Um, hit enter. Enter. So now, skyline is very easy. Skyline, in simple terms, you find three sky stars that are in the sky, or, you know, a planet, but preferably stars, that are opposite of each other. So, you know, if you're looking at the sky, you know, one over there, one over there, and maybe one behind you. The further they are away from each other, the better, and this telescope actually will try and figure out which stars those are, and hopefully it'll be right. But the one that I like to use um, is Auto 2 Star, 
or two star line. Auto two star, simply put, you hit enter, enter your time, and your, your date. We are in daylight savings time right now, by the way. Um, where you are, the date. Um, I like to go a minute ahead. Um, so you pick a star. Now, before I get into this real quick, a program that you guys should have on your phones, on your netbooks, um, well, on your phone, you should be using Google Sky. Okay, this is an Android phone. This is the Nexus S. You can use Android Sky or Google Sky. Sorry, and you can look up, and it will tell you what's where. For the most part, it's fairly accurate, but I don't use it 100% because on my netbook or on my computer, you have a program called Stellarium, which when you download it and install it, it's working for both Mac, and Mac laptops, and of course Windows-based PCs and laptops and netbooks. It's a real-time look at what your sky looks like, complete 360 degrees at any time of the day or night uh, for the past, well, since uh, whenever. Um, so it's really cool. I can go in and I can zoom in, and at 8.50, I know that Jupiter will be up in the sky. You know, I know that tonight at... Well, oops, I went too far. You, you get the idea. It's a great tool to have, especially if you can bring a laptop out with you, which you should anyway, because you should be able to connect the next, the Celestron next image camera. That's how I got those pictures of Jupiter, or those videos of Jupiter that you saw. Anyway, you can use this program to look up at the night nice sky. It's very effective. It's very quick and responsive. Um, they have older versions on their website for cameras that don't, or cameras for computers that aren't that powerful. Um, the newest version will work pretty good on a netbook as well, but I would suggest using a laptop if you can. So anyway, so you select the star that you found. Um, let's say you looked at um, your phone or whatever, and you, or you just know that Beetlejuice is there. So you find Beetlejuice on your own, you know, you use the buttons, you align it with your star sight, and then of course you hit enter, you, you fine tune it, looking through your eyepiece, probably 25 millimeter or 35 millimeter so it's centered, and then you hit align. So then you pick another star that you know is up there, so let's go with Deneb, and it's going to automatically do it. Okay, and I just hit the friggin' cable so it shut off. But that's how you align it um, with the two star, or the two auto two star, and that's what I personally like to use. Um, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, a couple other things, don't ever, ever, ever use anything to clean this, except, I know it sounds cheesy, but you can find them on, you know, OrionTelescopes.com. Don't go to, to Celestron's website unless you are a hardcore fanboy with them. Um, get Telescope rags or wipes, whatever they call them. They're designed to not scratch the eyepieces or the lenses. So that's the only thing you should use. Um, with these kind of scopes, you don't want to use Windex on them unless you absolutely have to, like some catastrophe happened. But they usually um, put stuff on their glass, the, the lenses, and, the, and maybe not the eyepieces, but the lenses to help them gather more light. It's all about gathering light here, folks. Um, if there's a couple specks of dust on here, like little bits of, you know, little dust, it's not going to hurt it. Obviously, if it's a major thing or a thick layer of powder, <laughs> you know, blow it off. Try and use air. Don't use your breath that much, but use a can, not a can of air, but an air compressor, you know, just something. But just don't scratch the eyepieces. Don't scratch the actual telescope. Um, I use a next image camera. You can go to Celestron's website or Amazon.com and find one for 100 bucks. That's what I use to uh, connect to a netbook or a laptop and record video. It's made only for, well, the primary planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. You really can't see anything else with it. It's not going to show you galaxies. It's not going to show you, you know, the wormhole from, you know, <laughs> Deep Space Nine. Um, it's just about light gathering. It's a CCD camera. You can also buy adapters for point-and-shoot cameras like I have, or you can buy um, adapters for digital SLR cameras, which I can't wait to get, um, to connect to this guy here. Um, if you want any more other tips videos, I will be making some, but if you have any personal questions, please let me know, um, and I'll be happy to make a video for you. Um, also, if you look at my videos, you'll see that I have some pictures of Orion and you know, planets and whatnot. That camera I'm selling, it's on eBay, it's a Panasonic ZS5. Um, private message me if you want it. I'm selling the camera that I'm filming this with right now and I'm taking those pictures with. I'm selling it for $150. It comes with two batteries, a case, a four gigabyte SD card, the box that the camera came in, um, and you know it's gonna it's a very very great camera it has exposure settings so you can do whatever you want with it it's almost like it's a dia, uh, an slr camera but in a point and shoots body um i'm selling it for 150 
140 starting bid, $150 to buy. Um, great camera, it's almost in new condition. There's a couple of minor, like, pinhead scuffs here and there, just from being in my pocket and whatnot. And the LCD screen is in almost perfect condition. Great camera, 150 bucks, but just let me know. All right, peace.